Sometimes in Formula 1, the reward for innovation is short-lived. That's certainly the case for the clever rear-wing endplate geometry Aston Martin introduced in July's Hungarian Grand Prix. While the design is completely legal, the interpretation of the rules that has effectively allowed Aston Martin to bring back the rear wing endplate in F1 will not be possible in 2023 thanks to the regulations being tightened up. Aston Martin will continue to use the rear wing design until the end of the season. It has been used at higher downforce circuits such as the Hungaroring and Sandvoort, but it wasn't used for Spa or Monza. But as technical director Dan Fallows recently confirmed, the rear wing design should reappear in Singapore. Were the rules to remain unchanged, it's likely that most, if not all, rival teams would adopt the design. After all, you can't keep a good idea down. So why is this end plate concept going to be outlawed? Why was it legal, for now at least, and what does it mean for Aston Martin's 2023 car? It might seem unfair that a team introducing a completely legal new idea should be banned from using it, but the FIA set up the 2022 technical regulations to allow such changes to be made. The idea is that if a team comes up with a clever interpretation, as Aston Martin has done with its recreation of the rear wing end plates, it can be made illegal for the following season. It's important to note that this principle exists in the rules, specifically in Article 3.2.1 of the Technical Regulations, which requires teams to prove that the aerodynamic effect of its design is not contrary to the intent of the regulations. The key is what F1 Supremo Ross Braun has called the raceability of the cars. While Aston Martin says its design doesn't have a significant impact on worsening the turbulent air behind the car, there are concerns that allowing this kind of design to proliferate could have that effect in the future. As the FIA's Nicolas Tombassis explained late last year, the wording of the regulations is designed to enable a moral high ground that allows such avenues to be closed off. But it's only right that teams should benefit from their ingenuity in the interim, hence why Aston Martin can run the design for the rest of the season. After all, it would hardly be fair to prevent it using a perfectly legal design, even if the intent is to close off such ideas in the long term. Even before this was enshrined in the rules, it's not been unusual for the FIA to do this, with perhaps the most celebrated example being the banning of the Mercedes Dual Axis Steering, better known as DAS, for 2021 after it was used for a year. Discussions have been ongoing between the FIA and the teams, with Aston Martin's Chief Technical Officer Andy Green telling the race that it has been agreed that the design will be banned after meetings of the Technical Advisory Committee. Of course, it's only natural that Aston Martin would have accepted this reluctantly, given it means sacrificing an idea it came up with and that likely would have been improved upon next year. The regulations that will implement the ban aren't yet finalised and published, but as Green says, this year is set to be the last we're going to see of what has proved to be a short-lived revival of the rear-wing endplate. While the Aston Martin AMR22 is not a successful car, the team deserves enormous credit for coming up with such a unique idea. The 2022 regulations were specifically designed to eliminate rear wing end plates, given the contribution they make to the turbulent air behind the car. But given end plates have been used for decades, every team will have been looking for ways to recreate that effect. Only Aston Martin did so. To achieve that, it had to work with the FIA over a period of months and show why the design was legal. The FIA eventually reluctantly accepted that it did meet the regulations. When the end plate design first appeared on Thursday ahead of the Hungaroring weekend, the team was delighted to see its idea was still unique. An important part of this process was taking a detached, clinical look at the regulations without being prejudiced by the various models of the 2022 cars F1 and the FIA had released. As Green says, this was all about looking at the rules as written rather than worry about the intent. So what do the rules actually state? Well, in Article 3.10 of the Technical Regulations, there are radius of curvature requirements that are conceived to demand a smooth, continuous shape with no sudden transitions. This was intended to prevent anything like an end plate, with the top surface of the rear wing blending into the outer pylons, as we see from the nine other cars and Aston Martin prior to Hungary. 
Effectively, the rear wing flaps sit on top of the rear wing assembly with no end plate to prevent that airflow spillage thanks to the need to have continuous consistent curvature. But what Aston Martin realised is that it's possible to extend these radiuses to create this curiously shaped end plate. The odd cylindrical shape on top of the end plate, which can only be created in the lower flap, is the result of meeting those rules. After all, you can extend the radius for as long as you want. Very clever, and absolutely 100% legal by the wording of the regulations. However, that creates an unavoidable leading edge that will create drag, and it will set up vortices that are dragged along by the car, which contribute to the turbulence F1 wants to minimise. This means that next year everyone will continue to run the simplified rear wing geometry intended by the FIA and F1. Unless, of course, some other clever way is found to recreate the end plate effect. So how big an effect will this have on Aston Martin's 2023 developments? Well, not a great deal, beyond the obvious simplification of the rear wing end plate geometry. Clearly, the team needs to make a big step forward after a difficult season. It started off the year blighted by a porpoising problem, something that improved with its dramatic change of side pod philosophy introduced at May's Spanish Grand Prix. But it still has generally been at the back of the midfield group, with on average the ninth fastest car. The tight-knit midfield group means that Aston Martin isn't too far off where it needs to be, but regular Q1 eliminations and relatively rare points finishes means it has not been a good season. Other than Sebastian Vettel's sixth place in Azerbaijan, it has been restricted to occasional minor points finishes, with a car that is generally more competitive in the races, but too on edge to qualify consistently well. But the team is still growing with a new headquarters and state-of-the-art wind tunnel being built at its Silverstone base. Dan Fallows, who joined as technical director from Red Bull earlier this year, is adamant that Aston Martin will be much more competitive next year and promises what he calls a big step forward with the AMR 23. That's because he's seen evidence of improvements all around the car, in his words, absolutely everywhere, including reduced weight improved stiffness, aerodynamics and a more stable car platform. Aston Martin still has a long way to go before it can achieve its ambition of regular race wins and challenging for championships. But after two difficult seasons, there are reasons to expect a stronger year in 2023. Even without its innovative rear wing end plates, Aston Martin has the potential to be far stronger in F1's midfield. The key now is it shows it can live up to those expectations.